Now that we know your fish networking is set up, we're going to make a moving player. This is going to be a progressive series. If you'd like to follow along, you may want to set up your project as mine is. I made a new scene named Main, which has a camera, a network manager I dragged in from the prefab, and a cube as the flooring. Now let's make an extremely basic player. Add a 3D capsule to your scene, and then drag it just above the floor. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to use a character controller on this. Now we need to make a script to move the player around. So on my scripts folder, I'm going to go create C sharp script, and I'm just going to call it moving and then open that up. This script is going to use things related to the network. So I'm going to change model behavior to network behavior. And you'll see this squiggly here. It's because I'm missing the namespace. So I got to do the control period or you can click the light bulb depending on your IDE that may vary and then add using fishnet.object. I'm going to write some very basic code inside update. But first, I don't like not having the scope in front of the methods, so I'm going to add private in front of the void. There we go. And let's do float horizontal equals input dot get access raw. So it's always going to be negative one, zero or one horizontal. And I'm going to do the same thing for the vertical input, except name a vertical float and then, of course, pass in vertical. I know Unity's newer input system has progressed a lot and many of you will be using it, but for sake of simplicity, this series will use the old input system. I'm going to make a move speed value on top and then move my character based on inputs. So I'm gonna do public float move speed and let's just do five to start. Now let's make that movement happen. I'm creating a new vector three called offset, taking horizontal physics.gravity.y so that the object falls, and then vertical. I also want to use my move rate, so I'm going to multiply this by move speed and delta time. Now I just need to apply this offset to my character controller, which I don't yet have a reference of, so let's set that up. Up top, I'm going to do private character controller underscore character controller and then private void awake. And then I'm going to assign that to the character controller on the object. Now with our reference, I'm going to simply do character controller dot move using offset. Now I'm going to go back to the project and go ahead and add that moving script to the character I have in the scene and leave it at the default values. Then I'll hit play and then start the client and server up. I'm moving around and I can see that it is working. To make sure that only the owner can move their own object, we're going to go back to the script and at the very top of update, we're going to do if base.isOwner, then return and we're going to change that to not. So if not base is owner, then exit the method. This indicates that if the client's connection does not own this object, they cannot proceed with the logic below. I've made a quick change to the code to show you another way to ensure code only runs for the owner. I added the client attribute and set require ownership to true. But again, to keep things simple, let's go back to the previous way. Now we need to go back to the editor and make it so our movement synchronizes with other players. And that's actually quite easy. On my player here, I'm going to go to add component and then add a network transform and go ahead and leave it at the default values. If you would like to know more about what these options do, then check out the network transform video. Our player is pretty much complete at this point. So I'm going to rename capsule to player and then I'm going to make a new folder in my walkthrough and then just call it prefabs. And I'm going to drag the player into prefabs and delete them from the scene. Now I need to tell the network manager which prefab to spawn for clients. So I click the network manager object and the prefab that comes as the network manager has a player spawner on it already. This is a quick and easy way to spawn a character in for the player as soon as they connect. So go ahead and drag your player prefab onto the player prefab here in the player spawner. I have made a build, opened up two executables, and then started the editor as server. I'm going to go ahead and connect the client and then just move them out of the way. And now I'm going to connect another client. You can see here that both clients can see each other. And as I move one client around, the other one sees it. Also, as I move the other client around, the other one sees that as well. Everything appears to be working great. The main points of this video is that the network transform replicates movement. And in most cases, you'll want to make sure that only the owner can control the object by checking if they are the owner before processing inputs.